gonna be very honest with you. These past few weeks, I've been under a lot of stress. Whether it's regarding finances, YouTube, game dev, or college, there always seems to be something picking away at the back of my head. A few days ago, I woke up early and decided I just needed a break. I spent the entire day simply just relaxing, listening to music, hanging out with my roommate, and eating some nice pizza. It was very simple but also kind of an eye-opening experience. Sometimes you just need to let go of what's bothering you and take a short hike. A short hike is a small open world indie game created by developer Adam Robinson Yu. You play as Claire, a young bird out on a retreat with her aunt, waiting on a call, who realizes that the only place that receives reception out here is at the top of this gorgeous mountain. Throughout your short journey, you meet and learn from many creatively crafted characters and get to marvel at some artistically designed locations. The story of how this game came to be may ring close to home for a lot of people out there. In 2018, its creator was knee-deep in development of a complex RPG game with lots of characters, locations, and battle mechanics. In the December of the same year, he started to slowly put together a tiny little world in his spare time, just a small place to escape into when things got stressful. One thing led to another, and this short hiking experience was created. When I say short, by the way, it is definitely a namesake. This game is short. With an average playtime only spanning about an hour and 20 minutes, it delivers a lot of goodness in just a few small moments. Right from the title screen, the game is already getting you prepared to escape into this world. You see a car driving out in the wilderness as the dawn breaks in the background. Once you start, a small conversation happens, introducing us to our main character and the premise of the story. The credits roll by, and here you are, a new Claire in a new open world, fresh and ready to be explored. You can choose to talk to the ranger bird sitting near the campfire to learn what's troubling you. You're out here in the wilderness waiting for a phone call without getting any reception. The bird, who happens to be your aunt, will let you know that the only place to get reception out here in the wilderness is at Hawk Peak, the topmost point of the mountain retreat. From there you can set off on your journey to make it to the top of the mountain and receive that call. Along the way, you can meet a bunch of relatable characters, including a bunny who's getting ready to prep for a race, but has lost their confidence because they can't seem to find their lucky headband. There's an artist who's out here experimenting with various art styles, trying to get inspiration for something that might become their next masterpiece. And there's some climbers that pride themselves for their skills and want to make the journey to the top as well, but slowly realize that they too need some confidence boosts and a lot of determination if they want to make it to the top. Did I mention these stories hit kinda close to home? The game doesn't make the climb easy for you either. Claire has a fixed amount of stamina while climbing and once this stamina runs out, she loses her grip and falls back down. This is where the golden feather mechanic comes in. There are golden feathers present in the game that once received give Claire more stamina while climbing and also allow her to do multiple jumps to increase her altitude while flying around. You get golden feathers by helping out other animals, or by simply exploring and finding them in hard to reach locations. This mechanic gives the player an incentive to actually go out and explore. The game wants you to look around rather than simply stay focused on the main objective. The more you ease out, explore, and get to know people, the easier the climb is going to be once you're finally ready to face it. There's a lot to do on the mountain, and even after two whole playthroughs, I'm pretty sure I missed a few things here and there. The more characters you meet and locations you discover, the more possibilities open up for you, including a whole fishing aspect that's completely missable, a bunch of hidden minigames here and there, and a lot of easter eggs and treasures that might need a second glance and a thorough eye. The fact is that many of us are stuck in this infinite spiral that I like to call the dance of life. We meticulously prance around, worrying about deadlines and phone calls, forgetting that we haven't actually gotten around to living. While writing out this video, I too was going through a very similar time in my life. Having come into some free time, my mind was constantly telling me that I need to take this time to focus on my dreams and work as hard as I can. But perhaps what I really needed was to sit back on a beach, patiently learn to fish, play some beach stick ball with some kids, and collect some pretty seashells. While the world we live in right now may not allow us to simply leave the house and go explore, games like this allow us to just wander around, fly high, and simply experience nature in its most beautiful form. A short hike in its small playtime gives us many diverse locations to get lost in. There's the dense forestry of the Black Woods, 
the great scenery of Outlook Point, the mellow rainy patches of the Southwest Peninsula, and so many others I simply cannot describe. So no matter what it is that may be pulling your strings currently, perhaps try to sit back and relax, take a short break, and enjoy the view a little. You never know what you may learn. If you decide to pick up this game, I wish you good luck on your hike. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to let me know in the comments below. And also head on over to twitch.tv slash twinkytalks where we play and discuss many similar games like this one. As always, thanks for watching.